Thank you. To my colleagues, we may represent different congressional districts, but we don't represent different realities. This bill benefits all of our constituents, and it does have bipartisan support. Republicans support it, nonpartisans support it, Democrats support it. You may not support it, and you may vote no, but I'll vote yes for my constituents and yours because they desperately need us to provide relief. And I take objection to those of you who talked about the $53 billion of funding that some of you voted for in the CARES 1 and 2 package that was signed by then-President Trump. That money actually went directly to providers to help them keep their doors open and to keep workers on the job, just like it did for PPP. And I helped many of my small businesses get access to that money. It also went to help our first responders and our health care workers with children have access to child care while they were on the front lines of this pandemic. Was that not the right use of money? And now you're in here saying that we have spent too much money on child care? What reality are you talking about? The reality I'm speaking of is the one that my constituents live with. One parent in my district told me she saw a sign in front of a daycare center near her home saying child care, $170 per week per child. That's almost $700 per month for one child and $2,400 for families with three children. Child care in America is simply unaffordable. Half of parents say that the maximum amount they can afford to pay is $200 a week, and yet the average cost of high-quality, center-based infant care in the United States is $2,400 per month. And yes, people should be properly trained to work with our children. This is not something that you should do unskilled and with low wages. But in Nevada, the issue of child, go child care goes even further. It's not only expensive, but it's also impossible to find. In addition to literally being in the desert, much of our state is considered a child care desert. According to data from the Center for American Progress, 72% of Nevadans live in areas that are considered a child care desert, which means there simply aren't enough child care facilities for the families that need them, including in rural parts of my district. And for the families who do find childcare, they're paying out what averages to be nearly $20,000 a year, or 32% of their median income for two children. That's reality. Mm. Nevada's shortage is only surpassed by Utah, where 77% of the state's residents live in a childcare desert. And across the country, it's 51%. So this is what we need right now to pass this bill worth $27 billion over 10 years for child care access and affordability. And as the executive director of the Children's Advocacy Alliance in Nevada told me numerous times that high quality child care was expensive and difficult to secure before COVID-19 and the pandemic has only exacerbated these conditions. But we also know that this is a gender and racial equity issue. As my colleagues have stated, women of color are disproportionately represented in the child care workforce. About 94% of child care workers are women, and about 40% of workers are people of color, who tend to be concentrated in low-wage positions, which decrease their ability to afford child care for their own children. For their own children. And now you want to come in here and say, we're spending too much. And some of you are the same people who talk about issues like a woman's right to choose and tout the preservation of family while not wanting to address the real life struggles that parents face and childcare is one of those struggles. So providing more childcare options while making those options affordable and accessible to families is the best way to preserve families of all kinds. And parents need to be able to know that their children are well cared for while they are working. So this is bipartisan for Democrats, for Republicans, and nonpartisans. 
You may vote no, but I'll vote yes for my constituents and sadly for yours too.